morning. <laughs> Can you say good morning? Good morning. Or good afternoon? Good afternoon. All right, it's day two of morning prayer and fasting, and I just wanted to say thank you guys for being with us. Uh, whether you're watching this in the morning or uh, in the afternoon. <coughs> Daddy, what you. day is it? It is, it's Monday, but this is for Tuesday. Can you tell them, say, happy Tuesday. What day is it, kid? Tuesday. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. Okay, that'll work too. All right, let's tell them the Bible verse. What's your Bible verse? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. For the Lord of God goes with you. They are already 31-6. Good job, buddy. Wonder, do you approve of this? I thought so. <laughs> just wanted to tell you this morning, Zane and Wonder, we just wanted to say be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Because the Lord our God goes with you wherever you go. That when two or three people gather in his name, that he is with us. And so even though we are digital this morning, I know that the Lord is with us. He wants to speak to us. And we're going to have a little moment in worship. And then there will be a devotional. And I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in today for day two of morning prayer. Let's pray. God, we love you so much. We thank you for today. We ask that you would speak to us. We are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. I will make room for you. Do whatever you want to. Do whatever you want to. I will make room for you. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to, I will make room for you. Do whatever you want to, do whatever you want to, I will make room. you want to do whatever you want to so shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better so shake up the ground of all my tradition break down the walls all my religion your way is better your way is better so I will make room for you do whatever you want to do whatever you want to I will make room Whatever you want to, do whatever you want to, cause I just want you and nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do, God I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. God, I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. God, I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. So I will make room for you. Do whatever you want to, do whatever you want to, and I will make room. Do 
whatever you want to do whatever you want to good morning new life church thank you so much for joining us through this streaming due to the weather we hope you're having a terrific tuesday already this morning if you would join me in prayer Heavenly Father, allow the Holy Spirit to reveal your truths to us. In your precious Son, Jesus' name, amen. I have been praying and seeking the Holy Spirit's revelation on the topic of surrender, full surrender, what it means to steadily remain in that state of full surrender. And he kept bringing back to me the book of Isaiah. And at first I kind of thought, Isaiah? And then the more I studied and read, I realized Isaiah. Isaiah, written by Isaiah the prophet to God's rebellious people craving worldly security. Isaiah, who prophesied to a nation that had turned a deaf ear to the Lord. A nation that had failed to serve God with humility who wasn't doing good deeds, seeking justice, or caring for vulnerable neighbors, widows, or orphans. So God declared that their sacrifice and worship was meaningless in his eyes. Isaiah, he revealed to us a God-centered way of seeing and living. Hmm. Surrender. Let's look at Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. I made this out of clay. I was in the sixth grade, and I remember my art teacher saying, you can use the clay however you want. You can make whatever you want for whatever purpose you want. I wrote my name on the bottom. I remember that I took extra clay that was just sitting around at the tables and I overlaid it just for extra design. I took the eraser end of my pencil and I poked it for extra depression marks and I was so proud of it. And I can remember that it sat on my father's desk all the time I was growing up and it held all kinds of meaningful writing utensils. It's lopsided. <laughs> it has a chip on the bottom. It's unique. But it was formed by its creator. It bears its name and it served its intended purpose. The analogy of the clay and the potter is purely to remind us that we are nothing, that we are dirt, that we are useless unless we are molded for a specific purpose and we wear the mark of the name of our creator, the master potter, on us. So the first question that the Holy Spirit just brought to light for me was, am I in his hands? Am I even in his hands? Am I at the potter's will? And what does that look like to daily be before God's hands at the potter's will? Isaiah 6, 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Isaiah humbly confessed his sins in Isaiah 6, verse 5. And then he experienced God's grace in verses six and seven. And then he heard and obeyed the voice of God in verse eight. That's full surrender. That is putting yourself in the potter's will, in the hands of the master potter. So I asked myself, do I humbly position, position myself as his possession in his hands every morning of the day? Am I available for his use daily? So then the second question he brought to mind was, 
Am I remaining pliable? Am I reading his word? Am I studying it? Am I praying? Am I listening? Am I available for conviction? Let's look at Isaiah 66, 2. All these things my hand has made, and so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word, to hold reverence for the word of God, to eagerly study it, to read it, to pray it, to listen for the conviction of the Holy Spirit, to obey it. That's the goal of full surrender. To remain in the form of moldable and reformable clay. God doesn't need a hardened Christian on ornamental display for him. Finally, he brought to light, am I honoring him? Do I bear witness of his name on myself as a Christ follower, as a daughter of the King, as a child of God? Do others see him in me, in my words, in my thoughts, in my actions? Let's look at Isaiah 58, 10 and 11. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. God reaffirms his readiness to bless his obedient people. The Holy Spirit dwells in me. The Holy Spirit dwells in every believer. The measure in which we walk in the Holy Spirit's power and fullness is directly related to the amount of humility, seeking of God's word, listening for God's voice, and obedience to his call. Surrender. I challenge you as I was challenged to look at 2024 to surrender more to God. And God's power desires for me, for you, for his church to surrender and allow him to work in us and through us. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, may I humbly allow the hands of you, my master potter, to keep me constantly in a moldable and remoldable form, a vessel for your Holy Spirit. In your precious Son, Jesus' name, amen. In the following minutes, we ask you to remove distractions and just sit in a prayerful state, humbly before your master potter God. There will be ideas on the screen for you to prayerfully lift up to him, listen in prayer to him, ask for the Holy Spirit to bring to mind the areas in which you may fully surrender to him. Not just this year, every day, each and every day. We thank you and love you. Have a great Tuesday.